Good morning everyone. Um, welcome to our daily devotion. At kumusta na po kayong lahat? Um, I hope na ang patuloy tayong nagiging expectant and sensitive sa mga nais i-reveal ng Panginoon sa atin. And patuloy po tayo sa ating readings ng First Chronicles na sa um, kahapon ay nasa chapter 7 na po tayo. At ngayon naman, itutungo tayo sa chapter 8 at bukas chapter 9. So, ang chapter 9 bukas ay huling chapter ng First Chronicles na naglalaman ng genealogy. So, mat- malapit nang matapos ang mga talatang pag- na binabasa natin ng mga genealogy. So, sa start ng chapter 10 naman, ay pag-aaralan na natin ang mga narratives, mga stories um, sa First Chronicles. So, basahin po natin ngayon ang chapter 8. At bago natin ito gawin, let's pray first. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we have your word today, Lord God. And I pray na ikaw po ang patuloy na mag-speak sa amin, sa amin Panginoon, na maintindihan po namin ang nais mo sa aming mga buhay. Habang kami ay namuhay ayon sa iyong kalooban. Lord, um, we always want to know your commandments, Lord Jesus. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Yan. So let's read chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 1. Benjamin fathered Bela, his firstborn. Ashbel the second, Ahara the third, Noah the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. And Bela had sons, Adar, Gera, Abihud, Abishua, Naaman, Ahoa, Gera, Shefufan, and Huram. These are the sons of Ehod. They were heads of fathers' houses of the inhabitants of Geba, and they were carried into the exile to Manahat. Naaman, Ahijah, Gera, that is Heglam, who fathered Uza and Ahihud. Verse 8. And Shaharim, Shaharaim fathered sons in the country of Moab, After he had sent away Hushim and Baara, his wives, he fathered sons by Hodesh, his wife, Jobab, Zibia, Mesha, Malcam, Jeoz, Sakia, and Mirma. There were, these were his sons, heads of fathers' houses. He also fathered sons by Hushim, Abitub, Elpaal. Verse 12, The sons of Elpaal, Iber, Misham, and Shemed, who built Ono and Lod with its towns, and Beria and Shema, they were, heads, they were heads of fathers' houses of the inhabitants of Aijalon, who caused the inhabitants of God to flee, and Ahayo, Shashak, and Jeremoth, Zibadiah, Arad, Eder, Michael, Ishpa, and Joha were sons of Berea. Zebadeya and Meshulam, Hizki, Hiber, Ishmerai, Izliya, and Jobab were the sons of Elpaal. Jakim, Zichri, Zabdi, Zabdi, Ilinai, Zelitai, Iliel, Adaya, Beraya, and Shimrat were the sons of Shimei. Ishpan, Iber, Iliel, Abdon, Zichri, Hanan, Hananeya, Elam, Antotija, Ifdia, and Penuel were the sons of Shashak. Shamshirai, Shihariya, Ataliya, Jaarishia, Elijah, and Zichri were the sons of Jeroham. These were the heads of fathers' houses according to their generations, chief men. These valid in Jerusalem. Jel, the father of Gibeon, lived in Gibeon. And the name of his wife was Maaka, his firstborn son Abdon, then Zur, Kish, Baal, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Ziker, and Miklot. He fathered Shimea. Now these are all, these also lived opposite their kinsmen in Jerusalem with their kinsmen. Ner was the father of Kish, Kish of Saul, Saul of Jonathan. Malkeshua, Abinadab, and Ishbaal, and the son of Jonathan was Merebbaal, and Merebbaal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah, Python, Melech, Tariah, Ahaz, 
Ahaz fathered Jehoada, and Jehoada fathered Alemat, Asmavet, and Zimre. Zimre fathered Moza, Moza fathered Binia, Rapha was his son, Eliasa his son, Azel his son. Azel had six sons, and these are their names Azrikam, Butchiru, Ishmael, Sheria, Obadiah, and Hanan. All these were the sons of Azel, the sons of Eshik, his brother. Olam, his firstborn, Jeos, the second, and Eliphilet, the third. The sons of Olam were men who were mighty warriors, bowmen, having many sons and grandsons, 150. All these were Benjamites. Benjaminites. God bless the reading of His Word. So, ang chapter po na ito na ating binasa ay naglalahad ng descendants ni Benjamin. So, si Benjamin ang bunsong anak ni Jacob. So, part siya ng um, 12 tribes ng Israel. Yan. So, ito ay continuation ng family history na nag-start sa mga naunang chapters. So, ang mga notable personality sa tribe na ito ay nakalista ng sunod-sunod simula kay Benjamin hanggang kay Ulam. At nabasa natin kanina kay Ulam, sabi, about kay Ulam, sabi sa verse 40, The sons of Ulam were men who were mighty warriors, bowmen having many sons and grandsons. 150. So, malalakas ang kanyang ano, lahi. Yan. So, lahat ng mga pangalan dito ay tinawag na sons of Benjamin. So, mga anak ni Benjamin ang lahat ng mga pangalan dito na binasa natin. So, sa listahan na ito, May kita natin ang mga iconic figures na sina Ehud and Saul at sila pa ang pag-uusapan natin this morning. So mag-start po tayo kay Ehud. So mababasa natin ang kanyang story sa Book of Judges chapter 3 verse 12 to 30. At sa Book of Judges ay paulit-ulit doon na sinabi sa ilang chapters ng Judges na sabi, And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Yan. So, sunod na mangyayari ay uh, ipapanish sila ni Yahweh, ang nation of Israel, and then another nation will rise up against them, and they will be captive for many, many years, and they will again cry out to the Lord. Then they will repent, and God will hear them, because God, in His angry, He remembers mercy. So, this time, this time, the, sa story ni Ehud, the Moabites defeated Israel. And then they, beca they became um, captive for 18 years. So the people of Israel cried out to God after those 18 years of captivity. They cried out to God and then God raised them a deliverer. His name is Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamin, Benjaminite. So part siya sa genealogy na binasa natin kanina. So the story of Ehud, it begins by saying that he was a left-handed man, isa siyang kaliwete. And in fact, um, the Lord used Ehud's left-handedness to defeat Israel's enemy. So um, Ehud le led a delegation to pay tribute to Eglon. Si Eglon po ang king ng Moab who was ruling over Israel. So siya po ang king ng mga Moabites na nag... nag rule over na sila ang nag-captive sa Israel. So, Ehud, he was, because he was a left-handed man, um, he was able to conceal a sword on his right thigh. Okay? Tina, na, nakapagtago siya ng, ano, ng kanyang weapon, ng kanyang sword, sa right thigh niya, sa kanyang right na hita. So, hindi ito inaasahan ng mga tao hindi ito ang normal na way na pag ano pag pagdadala ng ng sword dahil usually it is at the left dahil ang pagbunot ng ng sword ginagamit ang right hand at sa left hand ito kuku sa left na hita ito kukunin at dahil si Ehud ay left-handed so sa right hand sa right thigh niya sa right na hita niya ito tinago Yan. So, may dala siyang weapon secretly. So, 
he then pretended to have a secret message for the king. Halimbawa, mang, ano sila, uh, mayroon silang pag-uusapan daw. At while he was alone with the king Eglon, Ehud killed him. Yan, so wala nang kanila, ano, ang kanilang oppressor. Ang king ng kanilang oppressor. Yan, then Ehud managed to escape the king's servants before the king's servant realized what had happened. So nakatakas siya bago pa nalaman ng mga servant ng king na, na napatay niya ang nangyari. So Ehud after that became the leader of Israel and they killed 10,000 Moabites and then the land had rest for 80 years dahil sa leadership ni Ehud. Yan, so the lessons that we can learn from here is that God forgives sin, the sin of the whole nation, um, as they all repent. And God restores, um, He strengthens His people to do His will. Yan, so, puto naman po tayo kay Saul. Um, God chose Saul to be the first king of Israel. And Saul, he was a gifted military leader who won the confidence of Israel by saving the city of Jabesh Gilead from the Ammonites. And the Bible described him as a tall and a handsome man. And although he was chosen by God, Saul was chosen by God like diba, to become the first king of Israel dahil ng hingi na ng king Israel. Kaya ginawang king si Saul. Yan, kahit pinili siya, he was not faithful to the Lord. He did not do what God exactly told him to do. Um, kung anong sinabi ng Panginoon, hindi niya ginawa. Mayroon siyang sariling agenda. And then, um, pagkatapos, naging he grew proud and disobedient. And then God rejected him as king. So, Sabi ni Samuel sa kanya, Samuel na prophet ng Panginoon, To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as a king. So, mababasa niya ng story sa first Samuel, somewhere sa chapter 13. So, yan. So, si Saul, he was tormented into paranoia by an evil spirit. Yan, so, the Holy Spirit of God left him, anyone, siya, umalis sa kanya, and then an evil spirit tormented him, and he became insanely jealous of David's popularity and success. Sa time na yon si David ay nag, ano na, nagiging famous na siya sa nation ng Israel. Yan, so, naging jealous si Saul. Dahil sa popularity ni David and he sought to kill him. He sought to kill David. Then, ang kanyang, end ng kanyang life, he was wounded in a battle against the Philistines and ultimately, he took his own life to avoid capture. So, nagpakamatay na lang siya sa end. Yan, dahil sa kanyang disobedience. At kahit sa start pa lang, makikita natin na mabuti ang pagtanggap ng mga tao kay Saul. So, Soon, naging obvious na nag attempt lang siya na mag-build ng kanyang sariling kingdom with only human resources. So, yan, we should learn to seek God's blessing on any project or ministry if we want lasting result. Kung gusto natin ng napagpalain ng Panginoon, gusto natin na mag establish ang mga gusto natin gawin. Yan, so we need to seek God's blessing. So, in conclusion, sa story ni Ehud, uh, makikita natin na ginamit siya ng Panginoon to release the people from captivity. And God's favor was upon him. And through him, the land of Israel enjoyed 80 years of rest. And on the other hand, sa story naman ni Saul, makikita natin na pinili nga ng Panginoon si Saul na maging kauna-unahang king ng Israel. Pero hindi niya sinunod ang command ng Panginoon. And God was not delighted in the offering He presented because God wants obedience more. So habang tayo nabubuhay, let's continue to ask God to make a difference in our lives. Okay? God raised um, unlikely and ordinary people in the history. So in this genealogy that we have read today, 
um, God called um, people to do great things for, for them, for His people. So let's continue to trust God and to completely and to obey Him fully. And then we will be amazed when we see the things that God is doing in our obedience to Him. Because of our simple acts of obedience, God can do great things sa uh, ating generation. Yan. So, thank you for um, listening and let's end in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love and your faithfulness that endures and is experienced by every generation throughout the human history. And we thank you for today that you have made this day and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your word na nagaroon po kami ng pagkakatao na lalahani ng iyong kabutihan at katapatan na naranasan ng mga henerasyon ng mga taong kinikilala ka bilang tunay na Diyos. Today, we are reminded how important it is to be on your side and to be strengthened by your power. We thank you that we found favor in your eyes through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we continue to lead our lives to do your will, we ask, Lord, that you will strengthen us. Panginoon, pagpalain niyo po ang bawat isa na nanunood po ngayon as we start our day. May we become more aware of your presence. We ask your Holy Spirit to bring forth your word into our hearts so we will always be reminded of your commandments. We we'll bless your name, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah, so, thank you everyone again for um, joining, for watching our daily devotional. And we hope to see you again tomorrow for the chapter 9 of our daily devotion. And God bless everyone. Have a great day ahead.